Well, as you know, the um, subtitle of this gathering is, is about love in and love out. So did we just have an experience of some of that while we were sharing it? It's not, um, this isn't rocket science, this is human science, this is human dynamic. And I, I feel I'm, I'm going to be doing some review of some of the things that were covered here a few months ago, but in some ways that's what's constant and it's also what's new. So when, when we consider attunement, there are many ways that we are talking about a healing practice with regards to our bodies. There's a way we're talking about energy fields, which is part of our body, it's part of our energy body. But we're also talking about the animating force that animates the whole world, including us. We are not separate from that reality. Even when we no longer are um, alive, the substance of our body is still participating in <coughs> the, the decaying process and the energy of what's happening for the planet. I had a, I had this occasion, I run this program in Colorado called Full Self-Emergence. And one of the things we do is we do body-centered practices. And one of them is attunement. Another one is called The Form, which was created by um, a gentleman named B. He lives in New Zealand. But it's a little bit more of a moving kind of uh, body-centered practice. We do dances. We would use our bodies to um, connect with the physical as well as the spiritual. We have the conscious choice to do this. It's happening at a level, no matter what you um, choose, but when we choose to do it, we get to magnify it. We get to say, I am gonna be in a place of surrender and openness where I'm gonna let, not only let love in, I'm gonna be open and say yes to the universe. Well, I don't know how many of you know Barbara Marks Hubbard, but she's a revolutionary woman who's been, she ran for vice president of the United States in 1984. First woman to ever do that. It was when Geraldine Ferrara actually ran. I mean, she, she was nominated for vice president. She ended up, she didn't really want to run. She just wanted to speak to the whole Democratic Party. <laughs> and she got in there and she did it. And um, currently she's living at Sunrise Ranch. She's 88 years old. And she has been all over the world doing all kinds of programs. And she is a phenomenal being. I don't know how many books she's written. She has all kinds of podcasts, and she's still doing this on a daily basis. Mm. And last Sunday, she spoke in our service at Sunrise, and she just spoke about, I'm still saying yes to the possibility of being a universal vehicle, used as a universal, she used the word priest, and that word might not be something you would say, but I want to be available to be fully open to love coming in. And when you say yes, everything changes. Because you now are saying yes, and the universe is saying, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. And so here it comes, and it will change. And her point is, when you say yes, your cells have been waiting too. Your cells are ready to say yes. And they are waiting for you to say yes, because they've been actively doing what they do anyway. So I'm going to just go through some of this because of the time. In attunement, we speak about this spiritual activation, which is also about the one law, how life works. We have radiation, the radiant expression of life. It's happening from the invisible, but it's also happening from us as a person. Radiation, then there's response to that radiation. We, are, we get to, this is response to that radiation. When you say yes, that's response. Then there's attraction because there's all this energy that's happening because you, you are now feeling that attractive current that has been animating you anyway, but now it's happening in an attractive way. You find that you have union with it. It's actually you anyway, but it's you at various levels, and then together you have unified radiation. So in this um, time together, where we're this whole weekend, we're talking about love in, love out, and also what's new and what's constant, we're gonna look at how this is true with our world. Many people who do attunement think about this only with regards to source. It's like, oh, the invisible, you know? I'm gonna open up to the invisible, the invisible, I'm gonna respond to it and have some attraction with it and union with that. But how are we doing with the people in our life? How are we doing with the garden? I mean, there is radiation, our radiation into the soil of, of the earth and the response of the plants. I just walked out there and was totally impressed by carrots popping up where they weren't even planted. How does that happen except by response of the soil and the seed to what's happening by the human beings being there? 
And then the unified radiation, you might even think of that as the union, is when you eat the carrot. The unified radiation is when you get to live because the carrot's now becoming part of you. Isn't that a miracle that you eat a carrot and it becomes you? Yeah. I mean, really, whatever we eat these stuff and it changes into the cells of Jane. Not if you're not Jane, they feel <laughs> but they do become cells of you. It's like to me, I've been a doctor a long time, and it's still like that is phenomenal reality. When I studied obstetrics in school, one of the things we learned about um, in delivering babies, the cells in the uterus actually become different kinds of cells so a woman can deliver the baby and then they go back to their original form. Ooh, how does that happen? Other than life has a way of doing what it needs to do. And it's beyond what, um, what we might have thought of as a good idea. Like, nobody would have thought it was a good idea for a cell to become something else and then go back. I mean, that, that's like just too hard work, but it works. So in, in this um, experience of being spiritually activated and knowing love in, love out, and what's currently changing and what's current, always constant, is there is the surrender to, to the radiant energy that is you. One of the um, things that's very common in Western culture, it's probably common in most cultures, I don't know the Korean culture as well, but is the desire to be big, important, and great. And so we do our best to do the things that look in a progressive society as wonderful things that get accolades. We make money, we get a nice house, we marry a good-looking person. You know, people marry people just because they look good next to them. How long does that last? <laughs> I've never been married, but somebody could tell me. Or we, we decide to um, achieve things that will make us look like our life is valuable, important, but to be truly in touch with how, um, how your greatness shows is you have to become small and surrender to your greatness. Surrender to the natural power and juice that is already you. But you don't get to know that until you surrender to it and stop trying to be bigger than it and then impose it on that substance. Did that sentence make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. People try to impose their human desires on the substance that has been given to them, which is their own life current. Mm -hmm. And then say, how come it's not working for me? One of the students in the program I currently teach came up to me the other day. I, I give every student a coach, every student an attunement server, and then I am the, the overall director. We have several teachers in the course. And he came up to me and he said, I want to change attunement servers because I want a stronger attunement. Oh. 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 All right. I wonder if that has anything to do with you. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the, the two people he's talking about have been attunement servers for 40 years. And it's like, so you would like, what do you want him to zap you harder or something? But it, the whole idea of having a more penetrating attunement is by being more surrendered to the current that's happening between you and another person. <laughs> that's a classic. <laughs> he's, all, he's young, but it's one of those things that that's what I mean by our human ego deciding how to make life work better. So in this um, review, some of you saw this last April when David was here. We talk about these seven virtues and um, there's a dynamic that's happening in the way the creative cycle works. And it starts out with blessing, goes to understanding, taking action, fulfilling mission, enlightened thinking, courage, and grace. I just want to get you familiar with these things. We'll talk more about them throughout the weekend. And then there are seven spheres in which we serve in our world. One of them is our relationship to source, which I started out by saying, this is the one that most people, when they do attunements, they really focus on that. But you also have the sphere of working with your ancestors and, and the leaders in your world. And some of the ancestors are blood ancestors, but it could be your, your um, spiritual ancestors, people who paved the way for you to be where you are right now. Friends, colleagues, and partners. We almost all of us have a range of friends, colleagues, and partners that we work with all the time. Various levels of those. Some of them are friends we've had a long time. Some of those are things we tell people we tell our most intimate secrets. 
Some of them are just partners because we bought a business together, but you still have some kind of level of agreement with them. Followers, dependents, and staff. If you own a business, if you teach, if you do anything where people have to listen to you, you've got a range of people like that, people who are looking to you for leadership. Teaching, healing, artistry, and ritual space. In this one, not everybody has a big field with this, but if anybody's been a parent, they usually have to do some of that. And even if they're not, if they're, um, there's a way in which you, like Barb creates a beautiful space here. They're creating ritual space and artistry has an impact on the whole spiritual field. Family, community, and organization. This is people we consciously choose to live with, choose to not just marry, but family is the people that you love and want to create with. And then there's the world, the whole large world. And throughout this time, we're going to be looking at attunement also through the sphere of the world. I know the last time when you were here, it was through source. So I just want to bring you up to bring current where we are today. In attunement, we work with the glands. Most of you, how many here have some attunement training and know these words? How many have none? Okay. So we use the endocrine system as a midpoint of um, radiation to allow the coming forth of the spirit of the person. We use these particular glands. There are some others that are not part of the focus of attunement. But this just shows the, blood, the, the virtue that's related to each gland. So the top pineal is at the top of our head. It's grace or love. Pituitary is courage. Thyroid, which is here, is enlightened thinking. Fulfilling mission is right here at the thymus. The gonads, which are the testes or the ovaries, taking action. Adrenals is understanding and the islets of Langerhans, which is in the pancreas, is our blessing. I know this is a lot of information, but I want to mostly review. So if you're if it's confusing, I, it's not my intention. I just is anybody feeling overwhelmed already? Good. So the seven spirits that um, we use in the language of attunement line up this way. The islets of Lighter hands here in the pancreas is blessing. If we go up to the adrenals, it's, uh, I mean, down, well, the adrenals are higher, but that's the single eye, the spirit of the single eye. Go down to the gonads, it's the new earth. Thyroid, thymus is purification. Thyroid is life. Pituitary is the womb. And love is the spirit of the pineal. So the reason I'm, I want you to see all these is because we use these attunement cards that David has created. Seven spheres, seven spirits, 49 cards. And that's what he has created. And I mean, I helped with some of them, but he did most of them himself. So that we look at what's it like to have the experience of purification with regards to your ancestors? What's it like to have the spirit of blessing to your family and community or the world? So this gives you the range of the spirits and the spheres. And we get to know, when we first started creating these, Hugh and I were there, we were looking at what does it really mean to have these things go both ways? Like how do you give love to your ancestors and how do you receive love from your ancestors? How do you offer a blessing to the people in your staff and also receive it from the people in your staff. Some people are really good at, I, I'm gonna radiate like crazy, but to actually receive it and know the flow is something um, we haven't developed so well because it, it ends up feeling vulnerable instead of powerful. And I can tell you, if you're not being vulnerable, you're not being powerful because you have to be able to be small to receive. And small doesn't mean bad, it just means being open and receiving. So this is a symbol of um, the sun cross. We use this quite a bit. Acknowledging that a human being has these four main parts of themselves. We have spiritual capacity. We have a physical one. We have an emotional one. And we have a mental one. And we just spoke about these dynamics on the last slide. When it comes to the relationship between the spiritual 
and the emotional, that is the experience of blessing. Between the emotional and the mental, where the mind is open to the heart, the heart is open to how we think, we get understanding. Our mind having a relationship with our physical capacity is about taking action, making a plan, and being diligent. Our physical and our spiritual is leading our life in a way that we're fulfilling our mission. When we open to the spiritual and let our mind be open, we our imagination kicks in and we have enlightened thinking. And when our physical, this one for some people, they don't necessarily get it as easily, but the physical and the emotional, this is when you've got to do something and you need a cheerleader. We need emotional components to actually get done what we need to do. And, and the other way around, the heart needs to be protected by the physical. So it takes courage to reveal your heart. It also takes support, emotional support to get done what you need to do. So this day is all about courage, encouragement, and support. I like to call it the cheerleader loop, but it's also one of the most difficult things for human beings because they, think, again, don't like to be vulnerable. And if you're not going to do this loop, you better go back to starting over again. And the final one is actually this one again. But it is where who you are as a spiritual being is doing it all together, and that's all about grace. Because grace is where you, you understand how this all works, and you're doing it consciously. You're not just learning it, you're doing it, and you're showing it and inviting people to do it with you. Wow, it's late. That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. So I might skip through this um, because I'll get to it later. <laughs> This just shows the um, some of the qualities. Like when we're in love, the experience of blessing, there's the experience of love coming to the heart and the experience of the heart offering its response. When we're in the spirit, the experience of understanding, the emotional realm stays open and the mental sees what's happening with the emotional realm. Then we have understanding. In this one where we have taking action, the, the mind is offering direction and the physical is offering its diligence to fulfill whatever um, is coming for the direction. In fulfilling mission, the physical is loyal to what it wants to serve, and that which it serves is empowering it to get it done. In enlightened thinking, the, the spirit is offering inspiration to the mind, and the mind is offering its imagination to the invisible. Let's see what we can do. And in this one, encourage, the physical offers protection to the heart, and the heart or the emotional realm offers encouragement to the physical. And in, in, again, in grace, this is all happening consciously. And this is what happens if we do the opposite. If you're not offering blessing, what are you offering? Cursing. If you don't try to be understanding, there's almost always misunderstanding about what's going on. If you don't take take action, lethargy kicks in. If you don't fulfill your mission, you feel like you have no purpose. If you're not paying attention to the invisible in your own mind, you end up getting depressed because you think there's no options. And if you're not um, offering courage, encouragement and protection, discouragement, betrayal, and shame show up. And up here, you know, there's if you're cursing, you feel unloved, or there's a hate starts entering in. So let's go back to this. <laughs> this is what it's like for a human being to consciously function and know how to be in the creative process and see to see what it's like. But what what is new here, and what is constant? What is it that is um, being born through me now that is reliant on that which is trustworthy and constant? but has to allow something to be born new while leaving behind something that's passing away. People are, a lot of people are really into the new, like this. <laughs> I'm not letting go because this is my sense of security. You know that expression, better the devil you know than the one you don't? Mm -hmm. That's what people do. It's like, I'll stay with this relationship, I'll stay in this pattern even though it's killing me, because at least I know how it's going. And it does take some willingness to step into the new and allow this. This is a dynamic that's happening anyway. Let's get conscious of it and enjoy it. 
And if you don't think it's happening, um, I suggest you just spend a minute thinking about it because I didn't develop this overnight for you. So what is new and what is constant? In some ways, it could be, you could say it's a, the same thing. What is new is life and what is constant is life. What is new is what is being born and what is constant is that life is allowing something new to be born through the capacities and the uniqueness of your own spirit. Um, how I live my life, I mean, you guys, some of you know me for 10 minutes or an hour. Some of you have known me for 40 years. How I am now is different than it was a month ago. But how I am now is way different than it was 30 years ago. And a whole lot has had to pass away. I, my reference in my life was I was raised as a good Catholic girl. I was a really good Catholic girl. I went to church every day. I knew how to do a rosary without thinking. I knew how to make up sins when I didn't have any, <laughs> so I could confess them to the priest. I would make them up. I would make them up, and then the last sin I would confess was, and I lied. <laughs> so I covered it. I covered it all. And I, I once made up a sin because I didn't have any. I mean, I was probably ten, and the priest blasted me so hard. And it wasn't even really a sin. I said I forgot to say my prayers in the morning. I mean, that's not really a sin. But he, he yelled at me so loudly that all the kids in the church heard him. Did you, did you forget to eat your breakfast? I was like, I did. I was just making it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, is that a sin? I forgot to say the prayers. No, I don't think so. So I want to read this piece as a way of closing my part of, of this evening. This was a piece written by... Um, Reverend Safia Rose, she's from California. I don't know if any of you know Diego, who she's, she's a good friend of Diego's who lives at Sunrise Ranch. I think she was part of the church of Michael Beckwith's in, in California, the um, Agape Church. I don't know if she was a friend there, a minister there, but this is, these are some words she wrote, and this has to do with the experience of um, surrender. So I'm going to read this, and then I will pass on the, the floor. <laughs> so it's called She Let Go. She let go. Without a thought or a word, she let go. She let go of the fear. She let go of the judgments. She let go of the confluence of opinions swarming around in her head. She let go of the committee of indecision within her. She let go of all the right reasons. Wholly and completely, without hesitation or worry, she just let go. She didn't ask anyone for advice. She didn't read a book on how to let go. She didn't search the scriptures. She just let go. She let go of all the memories that held her back. She let go of all the anxiety that kept her from moving forward. She let go of the planning and all the calculations about how to do it just right. She didn't promise to let go. She didn't journal about it. She didn't write the projected date in her day timer. She made no public announcement and put no ad in the paper. She didn't check the weather, rep weather report or read her daily horoscope. She just let go. She didn't analyze whether she should let go. She didn't call her friends to discuss the matter. She didn't do a five-step spiritual mind treatment. She didn't call the prayer line. She didn't utter one word. She just let go. No one was around when it happened. There was no applause or congratulations. No one thanked her or praised her. No one noticed a thing. Like a leaf falling from a tree, she just let go. There was no effort. There was no struggle. It wasn't good and it wasn't bad. It was what it was, and it is just that. In the space of letting go, she let it all be. 
A small smile came over her face. A light breeze blew through her hair. And the sun and the moon shone forevermore. Amen.